do this for some people that are done. Before we go through uh, the chapter review that we went through, or I gave you yesterday, um, I want to go through what you guys can expect tomorrow on your test. The first four questions say graph the function, state the domain, and the range. Very similar to the first questions that you had on your review. Make sense? Okay. Then, I have two questions, five and six, that say evaluate the logarithm without using a calculator. Now, with that particular piece, that's where I wanted you to set it equal to x, rewrite it as an exponential, get the same bases, exponents are equal, done. Then I have number seven says expand the expression. Expanding it means you take the laws and you drag it out so that it's multiple logs in the problem rather than just the one condensed one. That's where you expand it out. That's where you take the multiplication and the division and make it equal to adding and subtracting. Okay? Then number eight says condense the expression, which I have it all expanded. I want you to get it down to one single thing, which we'll work on today here in a little bit. Nine and ten say use the change of base formula to evaluate it. All you have to do is type it, those in your calculator, change a base formula style. We'll go through that again today. And that way uh, you get the answer. 11 and 12 say solve the equation. Those were from section 7-6. That's where we had to like log both sides or E both sides or whatever we needed to do in order to solve it. 13 says write the exponential function. 14, write the power function. And then 15 is a word problem, and I'll give you the formula to use for that today. Okay? It's one that we've already had, but you probably forgot it. All right? So that's what you can expect. All right? So make sure that you use your time wisely, getting into the habit of making sure you're getting done in time. Okay? So, that being said, on page 5... 43 was where your stuff was yesterday. Let's go through that. The first one has y equals 2 times 4 to the x minus 2. And it says graph, state the domain and the range. Very similar to what you're going to be expected to do on 1 through 4 tomorrow. Okay? And I even, the nice thing about 1 through 4 is I even put little charts on there, little graph, pictures of graphs on there, so you don't have to make your own. They're there for you. The little graph paper is there. Okay, so how do I graph this? Most of you guys are putting it in your calculator. Now, when you put it in your calculator, be very careful about how you're typing it in because some of you guys are screwing that up. When you type this in, it goes y1 or y equals 2 time sign, 4, caret, and then it would be parentheses, x minus 2. If you have an older style calculator. If you've got a newer one, like Denise's I see out, when you hit caret, you wouldn't have to have it in parentheses because it would all be up in the top. Okay? Yours would have to be in the parentheses, no. Okay? And when you type that, what does it look like? And it looks like this. What do you think? Pretty good? Yep. Good. That's what Denise got when she did it. Now, remember, we usually said that it went through one or zero, 01, but in this case, it got shifted. Did you notice that? It got shifted two spaces to the right. Does that affect the domain of the range when it gets shifted? Not for this one. Because for these particular ones, it did not shift the domain and range at all. Because even when we shift it this way or that way, with exponential ones, that didn't change it. So what's the domain? Negative infinity. Oops, can't write it. Negative infinity to positive infinity. What's the range? Zero to infinity. Zero to infinity, because it went up. Now... Had I shifted it up or down, that would have adjusted the range. Okay, so if I would have put something outside of it, like an adding two on the outside, then I would have shifted the range up two. 
but as far as the domain go for an exponential, it shouldn't affect it at all. That's what you should have for number two. That's what you're going to have to do for one through four on the test tomorrow. It's just like that. Sketch the graph and tell me the domain and range. Okay? Number four has y equals four, parentheses, 0.25 to the x. Okay? So again, I think most of you guys are just going to use your calculators to graph it, which is just fine. And I'm waiting patiently for Brianna to get it because I saw her typing it in. She did a great job typing it. And here's what she got. Something that looks like this. Okay. Right? That's what she got. Okay. Now notice one thing about this. This is still an exponential. This is exponential decay. Remember we talked about growth and decay? Growth meaning if that number was higher than 1, it went up. This comes down. So this, that number right there is the decay part. That's the reason why. Because that number was between 0 and 1. Also, it didn't cross through 1 up here. across through 4 because of that times by 4 on the outside. Okay. Now... What's the domain? Negative infinity to positive infinity again. That didn't change. What's the range? Zero to infinity. No, because... All right. This is the way it works again. Domain goes this way. What's happening as it goes from left to right? The range is what happens going up from the floor to the ceiling. So in this particular case, when we have zero to infinity, we mean that there's this imaginary line that it's not going to hit, but then everything above it, it works. Okay, so that's why it was zero to infinity because it doesn't hit it here. It goes from here up. Okay, that's where it's going. A lot of people are putting negative infinity because they think it comes down the mountain, right? Which it does, technically, but it doesn't go down all the way to, to the floor. It goes up still. This is still rising up here. That's why that arrow was right there. Okay, so be very careful with that. That's number four. Number six has g of x equals two-thirds to the x plus two. So that's what it is. Okay. So now this one comes in here. And goes out like that. That's kind of what I have drawn, right? That looks about right. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, what's the domain? Negative, Negative infinity. infinity. Yep. Yeah, because they're all exponential ones. Uh, should be right. Wait, they got shifted to the Now, what's the range? 2 to infinity. Why did we get 2 this time? Yeah, because what happened was, right here, anytime you have adding or subtracting on the outside, that affects your range with these. So because we had a plus 2, everything got jumped up. Instead of having it right here with this imaginary line, what Tyrell was talking about here, it now up here at 2, that's what it's riding alongside. For those of you who still have your graphs out there, and this is you know, showing Brianna's, notice how it rides along that too? That's where it's riding. Okay, so that is your range. That affected the range in this one. That was number six. Number eight has y equals 
e to the negative 0.5x plus 1. You need to be extremely careful how you type this one in. Okay? How you would type that in or how I would do it is I would go 2.5 e, which automatically carrots it. If you have an older school calculator, this is going to be important. Then you go parentheses, negative 0.5 to the x, close it out, and then hit plus 1. If you've got a newer school calculator, Denise, like you do, or everybody else that has newer school ones, Nick, you'd have to hit the right arrow to get out of here. If you want to get this right here, or get out of there, you have to hit the right arrow. If you put the plus 1 up in the exponent, it's not going to give you the same graph. Be very careful where you put the exponent. Okay. So, here's what I got. I'm going to make sure Brianna first typed it in, right? Oh, she did a great job. And it looks like this again. All these were exponential, were they not? Okay. Again, even with an E in there, it's just an exponential because of the fact that we still have growth or decay. This will be an exponential decay because it came down because of that negative inside the exponent. What's the domain? The domain is still all real numbers. When does the domain change? When's the range? Hold on, we'll get to that one. So there's like a plus one, one to infinity. Does that mean that it's not zero? It's like, okay. Say that again, Ty. If like it has plus one, does that mean that's the like one to infinity? Right. The range gets affected by that number that's being added or subtracted to the outside. So if I had a minus two, that number right here, right here then would have been a minus two. Okay? So um, domain. domain is when we deal with, you know, on those particular ones, Every single one of those would be exponential. None of the ones that when we get to those uh, will be when we do 14, for instance. Okay? But none of those first ones, none of those were affected because they were all exponential ones. Okay? That's when we get to the graphing the log ones, Markel, that it gets changed. The domain gets changed. Okay? Everybody okay with graphing exponentials? All right. Good. Then, after that, number 10 says evaluate it without using a calculator. And this is what we were talking about. You have two of these on your test. Here's what I would do with this one. The first thing that I do is I put it equal to x. Okay? That's the first step. Then, after I set it equal to x, I'm going to rewrite it as an exponential equation, which means what's the base number? 5. What's the exponent number? X. What's it equal to? 25. 25. Okay. So I got 5 to the X equals 25. Now, with these, remember when we first did this, at the, and we talked about this when we talked about section 6, is all these can be written as the same base. 5 is not going to change, but what can I make 25 equal to? 5 to the what? Squared. So that's going to be 5x equals 5 squared. And if the bases are the same, then the exponent should be the same. So I end up with x equals 2. That's number 10. Number 12 has the log of 6, and then it's got a 1. Again, first thing I'm going to do is set it equal to x. Rewrite it as an exponential. What's the base number? 6. What's it raised to? The x equals 1. Okay, now that I've got that rewritten like that, now from here, what I want you to do is I want you to think about this. I cannot make a 6 into a 1 or a 1 into a 6, but there was a rule I gave you that works with this one. Anything to the zero power is always what? One. So what they're trying to tell you is six to the zero would equal one. So x equals zero. 
Okay? That's how number 12 worked out. Anything to the zero power is one. And 14. Right, y equals the ln of x minus 3. The one thing I want to talk to you about on this one is, is the minus 3 in parentheses? No. Does that make a difference? Yeah, it does. Okay? So when it's a minus 3 on the outside, which way does that shift it? Down. Okay, now, for this particular thing, what I would do, again, is I would type this in my calculator just the way it looks. I go ln x, and it, when you type ln, does it give you a parenthesis automatically? Yeah. yeah? Okay, then close it out. Minus 3. Y equals? Because you're graphing it. And I get something that looks like this. Right? Is that about what it looked like? Okay, what's the domain? No. The domain is not all real numbers in this one. Huh? Not quite. Zero to infinity. Why, Caleb? It does not. Remember, domain goes this way, right? The negative three, because it was on the outside, Denise shifted everything down three units. It actually didn't do anything to the domain because when you shift up and down, that affects the range, not the domain. So for this particular thing, nothing changed. Remember when you're graphing logs, the domain started at zero, and then if you shift it right or left, then we have issues. Okay? Then, as far as the range goes, the original range on all the log functions is negative infinity to positive infinity. Even if we shifted the whole thing down, wouldn't it eventually still go up all the way and still go down all the way? So what's the range? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, keep this in mind. I want you to pay attention to this part because this is important. If you've got domain and range here where it's, isn't that the opposite of what you had for the exponential ones? Yeah. Remember the exponential ones, the domains were all real numbers and the range was affected. Now with the log ones, the domain is affected and the range is the one that gets screwed up. Now, that was the only one you had for that. But what if you did 15? which you didn't have to do in your assignment, but I still want to go through it. When it says log, and it's got parentheses x plus 3 plus 2, when it says just a log like that with no base number, what base number is it understood to be? Base 10, which means can you put it in your calculator? Yeah. Yes, as is, because remember your calculators are set up to be base 10. So for this particular thing, when I type this in, it gets changed, okay? And it looks something like this. Almost looks like it just starts here, doesn't it? That's what Brianna's calculator looked like anyway. Is that what your guys' look like? Some of yours? Okay, now, what's wrong with this picture? Shouldn't it go all the way down there? Why didn't it? Okay. Well, it's log. That's how the log ones looked. Could that be something with the calculator with pixels or whatever? Yeah, probably. Now, as far as domain go, the domain did get shifted. Which way did it move? Negative 3, right, Casey? Okay, negative 3 to infinity. What about the range? Even though I move it up 2, 
Does the range get affected if we went from negative infinity to positive infinity anyway? No. Now, just so that you guys are aware of this, that first four questions on your test tomorrow, I said graph it and state the domain and range. Did I specify what types of graphs you have to do? No. You graphed exponentials, growth and decay. You've graphed E's, and you've graphed logs. So keep that in mind. You probably have some of those, right? Those are the only four ones that I have you graph. So they're probably going to be in there. Then 16 has two, the ln, ln, not that, of 7 minus 3, the ln of 4. And it says to condense it. This is where I want you to put it as one single logarithm as compared to having two in this problem. This is the laws of logarithms that I gave you the other day. This is where you get rid of the three laws. The first law is the one that I always use to get rid of, and that is dealing with exponents. The exponents need to go back upstairs. Okay, that's the first law. So I've got the ln of 7 squared minus the ln of 4 to the third. Now, before I continue, what is 7 squared? 49. What is 4 cubed? 64. The second law that I gave you the other day dealt with minus. Subtracting was the same as dividing. So I end up with the ln of 49 divided by 64. And according to the directions, it just says condense it. Does it say evaluate it? No. If it were to say evaluate it, then go ahead, type it in, see what you get. But it does not, so don't. It just says condense it. The only thing that would be a possibility is if I could have reduced the fraction. 49 over 64 does not reduce, so I leave it alone. That's condensing it. That's 16. 18 has the log of 5 plus the log of x minus 2, the log of 3. Again, the first step in condensing it, I get rid of the exponent or put the exponents back in play. This number needs to go back up here. Is there any other exponents that need to come back? No. Good. So now I have the log of 5 plus the log of x minus the log of 3 squared. What's 3 squared, Alyssa? 9. Thank you. So I got the log of 5 plus the log of x minus the log of 9. When you're going through this, please be methodical. Go left to right so you don't screw it up. Jackie, what's adding the same as? Right. So I end up with log of 5x minus the log of 9. And now just a few minutes ago, we've already talked about what subtracting was the same as. You guys told me it was division, but you guys are absolutely right. So now I end up with the log of 5x divided by 9. That is condensed. Okay? That's what they mean by condensing it. Get it down into one. Your college algebra books will say, rewrite this as a, as a single logarithm. That's what it will ask you to do rather than condense it. Okay? They do not give you one of these, but I'm going to do one anyway. What if it said expand it? So if they had log of 3x to the 4th divided by y to the 5th, and I want you to expand it. Okay, first one that Noah set up here, he said log of 3x to the 4th minus the log of y to the 5th. He took the dividing out. Right? Dividing was the same as minusing, and so far, so good. Now what piece needs to move? Not the exponent. The 3 and the x. If you read this the right way, right here, that says 3 times x to the 4th. How do you get rid of times? Log 3 plus log x to the 4th 
minus log y to the fifth. Very good. Then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of exponents. What do I do with those? Move them to the front. So what am I going to have? Log 3 plus 4 log x minus 5 log y. There was not one of those on your assignment, by the way. There was not one that had expanded it, but I wanted to make one up and do one with you today because you are going to be asked to do one of them on your assignment. Very similar to that. I made that up off the top of my head, but it's pretty close to that, I think, if I remember right. Okay? Everybody okay with that? The laws? All right. Then, on 20, it says, use the change of base formula to evaluate the logarithm. Please, I hope you guys, if anything, you get these two questions absolutely 100% right. This is nothing more than using your calculator and saying what you get. Okay? When you use the change of base formula, what you do is you take the log of the big number divided by the log of the base number. That's the change of base formula. You take the log of the big number divided by the log of the base number, and what do you get? One point seven four nine nine five two six four one. And I just wrote down every single one that Brianna had. If you guys round to two or three decimal, or I'd say probably three or four decimal places, that's probably where you should go. Okay? There are two like that on your test. Please don't get those ones wrong. And I've had people get them wrong. All right? Because they don't remember how to do them. But change the base formula. Log of the big number divided by log of the base number, and you're done. That's it. Okay? <coughs> Bless you, Marco. Then, 22 has 7 to the 2x equals 30. You have two questions like this on your test, and these two will be the ones that are be the most challenging, I think, for you. Okay? Now, this was from section 6. 7 and 30 cannot be written as the same number. No matter how hard I try it, there's not going to be the same basis. So if you can't have the same basis, you log both sides. Okay? So I'm going to log both sides. Throw a big old log in there. When I do that, what happens is I'm able to then move the exponent to the front. So I have 2x times the log of 7 equals the log of 30. Now, how do you solve for x? I'm going to divide. Now, Tyrell is up here saying divide by 2 log of 7, which he's trying to do this all in one step rather than 2. And that's okay. But if you don't type it in right, you're going to get it wrong. That will cancel that, and that will cancel that to give me x equals. But here's what you need to type. You need to type the log of 30, close it out, divided by parentheses 2 log 7, double shot at the end. If you type it in like this, log of 30 divided by 2 log of 7, if you type it in like the last way, this will do the dividing first and then times it by that, and this way is wrong. Another way to attack this, if you don't want to do it all in one step, is you could have taken the log of 30 Divided by the log of 7, get an answer, and then divide that answer by 2, and you get the same answer. Okay? I don't care how you would do it. Whatever way works for you, do it that way. But do not do this one. Okay? Don't do that one, because you will get the wrong answer then. By the way, when you type it in, what number did you get? 0.8739348483. 7, 3, 9? Yep. If I go to 4? Yep. Okay. That's number 22. 24 
has the log base 4x plus log base 4x plus 6 equals 2. I don't remember. We'll talk about that in a second. Mark. Okay, for this one, uh, there's way too many logs in play. Aaron, what's adding the same as when it comes to logs? <coughs> Multiplying. Good job. Good job. Way to, way to you know, have Katie back you up. Good job, Katie. Adding is the same as multiplying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece x times by this piece here. What's x times x plus 6? x squared plus 6x. That's still in the parentheses. I distribute, yep, and the, they're both the same basis. Now, when you have one log in play, what you would want to do for this one, much like we did for the first ones, you want to rewrite it as an exponential. What's the base number? 4 raised to the second equals x squared plus 6x. What is 4 squared? This number here, 16. How do I solve a quadratic equation? We've only had these, I don't know how many times. Why do what? I rewrote it. Base number, exponent, equals this. Huh? I didn't hear you, Taryn, but I think you're right. Subtract 16. Taryn is on fire. Now, from here, and I don't know if you guys realize this or not, when we had problems like this, there wasn't very many of them, but when we had problems like this, that factored. What times what gives me x squared? What times what gives me negative 16 but adds up to be 6? Positive 8, negative 2. When I set each of those equal to 0, I get x equals negative 8, and I get x equals positive 2. Now, remember... We had one like this yesterday, or maybe two days ago, when we talked about that worksheet. And I said one of those answers does not belong because it would have gave me a negative. And you can't do that. Which one doesn't belong? Eight. The negative 8. This is not right. So therefore, my only answer is the 2. Rewrite it first. Okay, if it's got multiple logs in it, if it says... Adding, you multiply. If it were to say subtracting, you would have divided. Okay? Then, 28. The formula for that says you deposit $2,500 in an account that pays 3.5 annual interest compounded continuously. What's the balance after eight years? Huh? Oh, I skipped 26. My fault. 26 is the one where you put it in the calculator and find the power function. That's where you go down to power. Are you guys okay with that? You know, that's where you go stat, or in your case, put it in the spreadsheet. Okay, everybody okay with those? All right. What would you guys get, by the way? I'll just write it up there. I forgot that that was even in one of the problems. I'm just going to read Brianna's, and if she's wrong, then you guys can yell at her. That's what she got. I see about three or four heads shaking yes, so that must be okay. Wait, what do you do to the power function? You go stat yeah. into edit, type in your numbers, okay, then stat over to calc, down to it's PWR reg. And then Depending on, like, your calculator, I know you'd have to go down to where it says calculate and hit enter. On a calculator like Noah's, once it says power reg, he's just going to hit enter on the home screen. Okay? All right, then the last one, 28. When it talks about finance, here are the two finance formulas. It's been a long time since you saw them, 
But this is what they are. The first one looks like that. That formula is used for when you're compounding formulas or compounding the money at different times intervals. Like, for instance, my savings account at Gate City Bank is done quarterly, which means my N is 4. My first Western savings account is done monthly, so then that means my N is 12. What's the T stand for? Time in years. So if I say after 10 years, 10 is going in there. What's the R? The rate at which you're receiving. Okay, and the P, the initial amount, the amount of money you start with, and the A is the amount in your account when you're done. The continuously for this one, you're going to use this formula. It looks like PERT. You're using E. Okay, on this formula, or this problem in particular, it said that you started with $2,500. That's your P. It says that it's giving you 3.5%, which means I'm going to put 0 .035 in for the R. Then it says how much is in the account after eight years. So you're going to put eight in here for your T. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I give you all those pieces, what do you have to do now? Type it in the calculator. As it looks. Some of you might want to chunk it. You might want to do e to the that exponent up there, or you might want to do 0 0.035 times 8, and then raise e to that answer, and then times it by the 2,500. Whatever. Whatever is easiest for you. Just know this. This all needs to be in the exponent. If it's not, you're going to be wrong. So if you type it in with the old school calculators, the older 83s and 84s, I would go 2,500 e, which goes caret, parenthesis, 0 0.035, time sign, 8, and then close it out. And then you got it. How much money is in the account? How much? Can you do that? Remember when I said 15 where there was a word problem that would dealt with money? Can you do that? Good, because that's probably one of them that might happen or might show up. Now, I am going to change this up just a little bit because of the fact that maybe it didn't have continuously. This over here, continuously. Maybe it said compounded quarterly. Same numbers. What if it said quarterly? Then that would be using this one over here. So 2,500 would go in for P. 1 plus 0 0.035 divided by 4. Why 4? It's quarterly. And then 4 goes up here too, and 8. This is where, remember when we did this problem when we typed it in, we chunked it. Which means we did this part first. Got an answer. Then we added 1. Got an answer. Then we raised it to... In this case, 32 because 4 times 8. Got an answer. And then times it by the 2,500. And then got a final answer, whatever that happens to be. And I'm going to steal Noah's calculator, and I'm going to actually do it. Your batteries are low, Noah. 0 0.035 divided by 4. Bleh. Plus 1. Bleh. Carrot 32. Mm -mm. Times 2,500. I get 3303.8. Three, three, is it a whole lot of money difference? No, because our interest rate's not that high. Okay? So that's what you can expect. I just did every single problem on the chapter review, so if you don't turn that in, that's your fault. Because I just did every problem for you. Now, the test is set up the exact same way. Now, again, if you want to keep your chapter reviews to use them as a study guide for tonight, be my guest. If you don't want to turn them in, then you can do so at the